Oh, first of all, my name is Leslie Sarmiento, I'm sorry. And I do own the um, Interiors by Decorating Dead franchise out here in Kingwood. And if you want to learn a little bit more about me, I do have information about myself in my handout, so you can just kind of browse through that. So before we get into the actual um, space planning part um, that we're going to talk about today as part of the decluttering uh, process, we're going to talk about what's new for spring. So we can just be fresh and be updated and know what's going on. And uh, if you have been to my fall workshop um, last year, you will remember that I talked about the color of the year. And um, Pantone, which is the industry standard for color matching and who dictates the colors for design and fashion, they come up every December with a color for the year, which reflects um, kind of what's going on in the world around us and how we feel about certain things. And so this, just last <coughs> December, they came up with um, the color for 2010. And does anybody want to guess what it is? Purple. No, but that's good. <laughs> Turquoise. Turquoise, yes, oh, absolutely. Gosh. So that's the color of the year, and it is beautiful. We love turquoise for many, many reasons. Um, real quickly, it's because it signifies escape and healing. And you know, last year was really bad. This year, it's kind of getting better. You know, we're hoping it will get better, um, but we're not there yet. So, you know, we still kind of want to escape and get away from, from what's going on in the real world. And if you look at this picture right here, you can see, you know, that's kind of where we want to be, right? Um, turquoise is inspired by the water and the skies. If you look at it, it's like you're looking where the sky meets the water and just kind of gives you that serene feeling. Um, and then in many cultures, we love the gemstone, the turquoise gemstone. It is a, a protective talisman like a, like it has spiritual properties that um, give you healing power. So, you know, everybody, go get yourself some turquoise and wear it every day. You never know. <laughs> or put it around your house. So, um, now that we kind of figured out the color for 2010, let's go ahead and move forward to um, the other trends that are growing. Oh, here's another reason other reasons why we love this color. Appeals to men and women both, adds a pop of color to neutrals. And um, do you, does anybody remember what the uh, favorite neutral color is for this year? From, from the gray. fall? It's probably gray. Gray, oh, you are so good. <laughs> you are all up to date with this. Um, yes, it is gray. So just imagine turquoise and gray together. Um, what a nice color palette that is. If you want to even bump it up a notch, how about turquoise and silver? that bling in there, so I think that was fabulous. Um, turquoise is good with reds and pinks, even with orange and coral. It's a good um, combination. If you pair it with the deep blues, it gives you that um, classic maritime, that nautical look. And then if you, even if you pair it with like the lightest of yellows or the mutest of greens, it livens it up instantly. So that's why we love turquoise. All right, so let's move on to the other trends. So the first one is natural finishes now. So we, we want to say no to faux. And uh, now, now in the, uh, it's kind of hard. Still here, you know, in the coastal parts of the country, they're, they're gone with the faux. They don't, they don't like faux anymore. But kind of here, we still, we're still kind of attached to that. But maybe we, we, we'd be moving forward, you know, from 2010 moving forward. Um, and, and people are... Um, more interested in, in seeing the visible wood grains in the wood, for example, in cabinetry and furniture, of course. If you have um, wood blinds, you want to have the blinds with the grain in it, or shutters. Um, stained shutters are much more on trend than the painted kind. Um, distressed finishes and furniture, obviously I mentioned wood, metal, um, and leather. We, like le we don't like the shiny leather that um, looks like it's in your car. We like the leather that's got character, that's got marks on it, um, that's worn, and that's that's the kind of leather that's coming up that's becoming more popular. Natural materials, of course, we love our granite, travertine, those kinds of things for stone. Woven fibers, we'll see that a lot in um, your case good furniture, such as um, tables and beds and chairs and things like that. Um, like woven rope textures, abaca, hemp, those kinds of things. Also, on the walls, you'll see um, 
very popular grass cloth, those kinds of things. And um, even woven woods, as you see in this picture, woven woods on the windows. Um, and then in fabrics, um, natural fabrics such as linens, cottons, um, bamboo becoming very popular. And the reason is, you know, trends reflect what um, we as a society feel or what's going on around us. And so um, this is um, reflective of our desire to get connected back with nature and um, be closer to the environment and preserving the environment, things like that. So um, back to fabrics, um, silk is also going to be um, a popular fabric. And the more slubbing, the more texture, the better. And of course, animal skins. And the big animal skin for this year seems to be, if you're um, up to date on the fashion, seems to be python, right? Have you all seen that? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not in my house, right? Yeah. Okay. Number two, simpler but bolder designs. So we, you know, we want to declutter. We don't want to have anything that's too complicated, too fussy. But we don't want a symbol that's boring. So we still want to make a statement, even if it's just a simpler, cleaner line. Um, so it's really about stepping out of your comfort zone, stepping out of the box, thinking about um, what you would not do conventionally, and adding the unexpected to your design. Sometimes it's just one thing, you know, sometimes it, may, it doesn't have to be a big statement. Maybe sometimes it's just a little unique piece that you have that you want to, you know, um, be the focal point in your room. And for example, in this picture right here, I don't know if y'all can see that, the statement is just the wallpaper on that one wall, and um, that makes it just stand out and make it very unique. And the other um, elements in the room are actually pretty traditional, pretty neutral, and very classic, and not really Without that wall, it's really not anything unusual, right? And I also want you to pay attention to the ceiling. That wallpaper is um, brought up to those little areas in the ceiling. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but that is also a growing trend. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to go back? Oh, it's all right. No, don't worry. Are you sure? <laughs> I have put wallpaper in the, the wallpaper sets, in, yeah, the wallpaper. Side. yeah. So that's that's the big another big trend is pattern not on the walls but on your ceilings and on your floors. So um, this is of course an extreme example because this is like a big you know uh, building. But um, you know if you can get creative and just think of any kind of you know you can paint the design, you could stencil it, you could use the tin, um, the hammer tin. Um, or, or wallpaper, which to me is the easiest thing to do, um, just to give it a little uh, texture, a little bit of interest, you know, when people look up there and say, oh, I didn't expect, you know, to see that. And also on the wall, I mean, on the floors. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, expensive, like tile that you have to get a certain pattern or whatever. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fabulous. But um, you just get color with a pattern or with an area rug. Um, something as simple as that and just add color. So that's the emphasis. And finally, the good old days. And, um, you know, Ellen was talking about the sentimental value and things. And a lot of people um, right now with things, you know, kind of not doing too well, um, they want to go back to those good old days and, and take comfort in and, and feeling good from what was past, like, um, you know, probably past travels, if you've been anywhere fascinating, you want to go back to that time and kind of pull out the old souvenirs and all that good stuff and then um, maybe go back to where you grew up and think about your childhood memories and, and you remember, you know, heirloom and vintage pieces from your mom or your grandmother, things like that, that give you comfort. So those things are getting pulled out. But again, um, take note that it's, it's not pulling out every single piece of, you know, of souvenir or every single piece that makes you feel good. You kind of have to pick and choose um, and just take your favorites out maybe so that you don't clutter up 